Hey everybody, welcome to a lectionary psalm reflection where we take a look at the lectionary psalm for this coming Sunday, April 11, I think. It's all a blur after Easter. It kind of is, but it is the second Sunday in Easter. So we have a rather short psalm. Oh, by the way, we should mention that Stefan is not here. Uh, should we say where he is, or should we just leave it a mystery? I don't even know where it is, so it's, it's a mystery. I just know he's not here. <laughs> well, he he's on a little, you know, this is spring break for a lot of families. And so he's got three young kids. Uh, they're all on spring break this week. So him and Kara and the boys went somewhere local just for like a couple nights. I think they got like a little cabin in the woods or something like that. So Stefan is probably in the woods right now. Awesome. So we're happy for him, but we carry on, Cameron. We are here and we're ready here. to go with Psalm 133 this week. Yeah. So here it is. Um, it doesn't start with um. I'm just going to read it. <laughs> How good and pleasant it is when brothers live together in unity. It is like precious oil poured on the head, running down on the beard running down on Aaron's beard, down upon the collar of his robes. It is as if the dew of Hermon were falling on Mount Zion, for there the Lord bestows his blessing, even life forevermore. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to God. be to God. Well, let me share a couple of thoughts. And then you can chime in. Of course, I think you sang a song. Yeah. Which is great. So I'm excited to hear that. But here's a couple of thoughts. So it's the second Sunday of Easter. And this psalm is all about unity and harmony and a community of people getting along. And uh, I did read one commentary uh, today that talked about how interesting it was that this has probably been the most divisive year uh, in recent memory with political divisions, uh, different responses to COVID. And so we've gone through a really hard year as a church community where we've been on some different pages about some pretty important issues. And then here comes along Psalm 133 and it starts off, how good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. And the commentator said, um, we should add the word rare mm. to that first line. How good and pleasant and rare it is <laughs> when God's people live together uh, in unity. Because sometimes it does feel like that. It feels like, are we getting along? Um, are we actually unifying? Um, how harmonious are we? Uh, are we going to require everyone to be of the same opinions about everything? Um, because sometimes unity, uh, we think of unity as uniformity, mm. and they're not the same thing. Mm -hmm. So how do we stay unified in our diversity? That's always the challenge. Um, What's interesting too about this uh, Psalm 133 is it gets paired with other passages for the second Sunday of Easter. And one of the passages it gets paired with is from Acts 4, verse 32 through 35. So I don't know if you listen to the podcast, but on the podcast, we talked about how the lectionary does something interesting in Easter where it exchanges the Old Testament passage for the book of Acts. And so if you're used to reading the lectionary, or maybe you grew up in a, an Episcopalian or maybe a Catholic tradition, you always know that when Easter hits, you're in the book of Acts, mm. which is really interesting because it doesn't feel very Easter, Easterly. It's like, huh? Aren't we going to like explore the stories of like Jesus rising from the dead and appearing to people? It's like, yes. But the lectionary writers immediately jump into Jesus has risen, and here's what that means. Like here are the implicate, like here's how that works itself out in the world. And so what's so interesting about that Acts 4, verse 32 through 35 passage is it says this: all the believers were one in heart and mind, 
No one claimed that any of their possessions was their own. They shared everything they had. The apostles testify uh, to the resurrection. God's grace was at work. I'm paraphrasing a little bit. Uh, there was no needy persons among them. Uh, if anyone owned land or houses, they sold them, brought that uh, the money from the sales and brought it to the apostles' feet and they distributed it. So what's kind of interesting is one of the first implications of the resurrection of Jesus from the dead is a sense of unity in community. It's not, it's not about like people's personal piety. It's not like Jesus rose from the dead and therefore I'm going to try to be the best version of myself possible. Like I'm going to achieve, you know, I'm gonna try to be a really good person or something. It's, it's not about that. It's actually like one of the most practical implications of Jesus, Jesus rising from the dead and the spirit being given was that the community had the power to share their possessions. It's like, that doesn't sound like Easter. It's like, what does that have to do with ri Jesus rising from the dead? But the lectionary is like, no, no. One of the signs of the coming kingdom and one of the signs of Easter power or resurrection power is a community of persons living together in unity and sharing their stuff. And that's almost like too ordinary. It's too plain. It's like, huh? That doesn't sound very spiritual. Um, so I think that's kind of interesting. Um, I have this here. The Easter message expresses itself in a renewed community of persons who are unified. So they're free from the fear of scarcity. They're free from greed. They're free from hoarding. And people are given the power to live in harmony together and to share. Um, so Psalm 133 then uh, uses these two things. It says, when God's people live together in unity, it's like two things, oil, and it's like dew. And both of them are a sign of abundance, especially the one of oil. Oil was a scarcity commodity. And so it's almost like what they're saying is, um, it is so good when God's people live together in unity. It's like, it's like taking a shower. It's like taking an oil shower. It's like, you don't have to be afraid of scarcity. It's like, there's enough for everybody. It's like, it's this, it's the symbol of abundance of extravagance of almost being wasteful with something very expensive, something very precious. It's like, don't be afraid to spill it. Don't be afraid to get it all over everyone. You know, don't be afraid to take a shower in it. And the same idea is that the dew, you know, you don't do anything for the dew. You wake up in the morning and the grass is wet everywhere. There's just this layer of dew. And it says like that too, it's refreshing. It waters the grass, uh, but you didn't do anything. You didn't do anything to make it happen. So it's another sign of grace. Anyways, I just talked for a long time. No, that was great. That was amazing. Um, when I read verse two, I just get this picture of pancakes and just dumping this giant thing of maple syrup and seeing it all I just drip down the edges of the pancakes into all the cracks mm -hmm. as if the pancake is like, you know, the stack of pancakes is Stefan's beard or whatever, just sort of like rolls down. And it's interesting because Aaron was what Moses's brother. Yeah who was and like a high priest. Yeah, he was a high priest. And so I'm not sure all the significance of oil, you can maybe talk a little bit about that. But, you know, here's this very sort of righteous, pure man that um, is still sort of being anointed by God, mm. you know, in this passage. And it just sort of like, you know, as you were talking, just talks about sort of the depth of what it looks like to, to live in unity. And I, I think unity too, like, we're not just talking, I mean, as the book of Acts says, like there's, there's you know, it's talking sort of the, the physical unity of people taking care of physical needs together as a community, like living the Christian life is at its best is meant to be communal. It's not to be meant to be this sort of singular aesthetic life. Um, 
So you have that, you have the physical, but then you also like have sort of a unity of vision and, and what, um, and what that community is. And I think that that's what you, you know, Sam spoke so eloquently about is the idea of sort of the vision is living into the reality of the resurrected Lord of that, of that kingdom coming. And so, um, it's like there, those are the two things that like almost can't be compromised. But I, as you know, to have unity with any other person, like a spouse or, or kids or anything, it does require a tremendous amount of sort of compromise because it's sort of like putting yourself away. And it's like the resurrection is always sort of also speaking to the crucifixion of Jesus too and sort of his suffering and his sort of putting him, his own needs aside in that moment. And so it's like a, it's like a, you know, double-edged sword. You can't, you can't sort of have one without the other. And so like, you're sort of living into the idea of resurrected power of unity of vision that, you know, we are, we are doing this thing together called, called church and called worship and called serving because Jesus served us and died for us. And then on top of that, and because of that, um, we're sort of embodying the body and the fact that we're taking care of one another. And, and I guess the big like million dollar question like right now is how to do that during COVID with isolation, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know? Um, and so I guess in some ways, um, what I thought was so brilliant about sort of the last sermon series was the idea of writing letters to friends. Mm -hmm. That was sort of a really beautiful way to just sort of reach out um now that the weather's getting nicer hopefully we'll find more creative ways to to connect and to reach out but you know like we just made the announcement that this week we're going to sort of go back to to virtual worship and it's sort of like again where is our um where does our unity come from mm -hmm. you know knowing that 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 we can still be together and praising jesus for his death and resurrection wherever we are you know and yeah. so i guess uh i wasn't super clear about that but i think i think it's important to acknowledge two things like we, we have to constantly sort of acknowledge the cross and that to achieve unity we have to put ourselves aside in certain moments but then there's also sort of unshakable things mm -hmm. which is the sort of the fact that we are meant to live in community not isolate so how do we do that and also that our, our like main focus is is Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so um, if that's helpful at all. Yeah, for sure. I mean, this year has been unusual. So if we could just take whatever happened this past year in terms of, you know, not being able to be together as a community in the ways that we wanted to be together, or that we're used to being together, it's like, okay, just take that, put it aside. Because it has been a very unusual year. Because normally we can meet together and we can be together as a community. I don't know if people pick this up every Sunday, but the only way we're going to achieve unity as a community of diverse persons um, is to find an identity beyond ourselves, mm -hmm. something that unifies us. And so every week in our baptismal remembrance, I pour the water. And usually we do that near the beginning of the service. And part of that is to remember that our deepest identity our deepest identity is as children of God showered with grace. And that's something we can all agree on. Mm -hmm. That goes beyond any political affiliations. It goes beyond any uh, preferences for worship, you know, styles of worship. Um, and so we have to go to a deeper identity, one that doesn't change and also an identity that's given to us, one that we don't achieve. Mm -hmm. And so every week we get reminded that our unity is not based on anything we've done. It's based on a gift of grace given to us by God. And we get named as our deepest and truest selves as adopted children in the family of God. And so that becomes our starting place. Yeah. And we can agree on that. And if you can get right about that and you can see everyone else around you when you pass the peace of Christ, it's like, oh, there's... Look at all these adopted children. We call them brothers and sisters, like, you know, the way this whole psalm starts out. 
That's right. Brothers and sisters, all part of the same. They're not our enemies. We're all together under the cross, recipients of grace. Um, that's the basis of our unity. So it's really based on who God is and mm -hmm. God's generosity. Mm -hmm. Cool. What a cool psalm. Yeah, it is kind of cool. It's You know, it's funny. Um, today we're reading about this beard, Aaron's beard. And the person who has the biggest beard isn't here today. I know. I was just thinking about, yeah, pouring some maple syrup all over his head. <laughs> as like we could just do it as a, not a stunt, but as an application of... Uh, you just yeah let's get, <laughs> let's just get some oil happens. because we could do something like vegetable oil but let's do something stickier let's do maple yeah. syrup yeah but since he's in the wood he might you know he might have access to to something like that he where... might accidentally take a nap against a uh, a maple tree and yeah. accidentally get maple syrup on his beard yeah there's lots of possibilities <clears throat> Well, well, I sang, a, I sang a, a Puerto Rican song this week. Yeah, tell so tell us about it. Uh, it's just called "Behold, How Good and Delightful." And um, one of the things, you know, in complete honesty, talking about unity and and how I feel like how things have been opened up is that it's. I just find it sort of fascinating that. Um, so with this book. Psalms for All Seasons, and as well, um, Lift Up Your Hearts Hymnal, which we use a lot. Um, you can go to a, a site that basically takes you to, to resource you. So there's sheet music there, there's lyrics, there's the history of the psalm. And then there's usually like little recordings. And it's mm -hmm. usually little recordings done by sort of CRC churches in the, in the neighborhood and in, in the city, um, because most of these books were, are sort of Grand Rapids based publishers. Their churches usually around here. Often when I go to sort of an ethnic song, and I'm sure a lot of that has to do with the sort of the identity of the congregation, there's no recordings of them, mm. which sort of just suggests that maybe they're not, you know, being sung that often. And I, I think we have to sort of look at our own identity. But this was, again, sort of, you know, one of one of them. So I went to trusty YouTube and I found one Puerto Rican guy singing it in Spanish. And it just sort of taught me how to learn it. He was just playing, you know, playing it on the piano. Maybe he had like 17 views. And I scoured the internet and it's the only recording of this song, but yet they put it in this book. And so, um, yeah, I guess I just yearned for the day that, that some of those gaps could be filled in the spirit of this psalm, particularly about brotherhood and unity and all this sort of stuff. Like, um, you know, is, is there a way that... Uh, yeah, I, I just don't know what that would look like. So I just, uh, I ran with it and uh, did my own little version, but it's really lovely. Behold, how good and delightful a gift it is. Behold, how good and delightful a gift it is. When sisters and brothers join hands to live in unity. There the blessing of God descends. There is life now and forever. There the blessing of God descends, endless life. And um, it reminds me of one of my all-time favorite Bob Dylan songs, called Just Like Tom Thumbs Blue Blues, which also has the opening line is, um, has an Easter image in it too. But musically, it's very similar. I love but it. By the way, that song too, it's a fantastic song. And um, it's like when you're lost in Juarez and it's Easter time too, is the first line. <laughs> By the way, if you wanna see something funny with Bob Dylan, go to YouTube and type in Bob Dylan we are the world singing or something like that. Yeah. He looks like he's having a great time. <laughs> Bob Dylan singing, we are the world. Remember that world anthem? If you're watching this video, that world anthem that Lionel Richie and Michael Jackson wrote. Yeah, it's anyway, classic. Bob Dylan singing, we are the world. Look it up. Yeah, he's like, what am I doing here? <laughs> he's like, how what did am I doing on this agent? Plan? Why did my agent <laughs> book me? <laughs> oh, Bob. All right. Well, enjoy the song, everybody. Have a good week. Have a happy uh, Easter week, too, which is enjoy cool. the warm weather. Enjoy the warm weather. We'll have, you know, the Easter decorations still up for 
it's 50 days, right? 40 days, 50 days. Yeah. 50 days all the way to Pentecost. Cool. And Stefan, send us a video of you dumping maple syrup on your head. The maple syrup challenge. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll start it. We'll start a TikTok sensation. There you go. <laughs> All right, folks. Thanks. Have See you next week. Have a good week. Love.